in engineering, series are extremely important. For example, Taylor series or Fourier series. However, series are a special type of sequences. So in order to understand series, we need to understand sequences first. So in this video, we'll learn what a sequence is and we'll also see its relation with functions. Uh, a sequence in mathematics is a list of numbers. And not just any list of numbers, it's an ordered list of numbers. For example, if you have a list of four numbers, numbers uh, 1, 3, 5, 7, you have a sequence uh, where 1 is the first element, 3 is the second element, 5 is the third element, and 7 is the fourth element. And we denote a sequence between brackets as follows. So there we have our sequence. Well, usually, uh, notation where we denote, where we write down all elements of the sequence is a bit impractical. So what do we do instead? Uh, we use an over here. We say the, uh, the sequence has four elements, so we go from n equals 1 to n equals 4. And then we uh, give a formula for every element an. And if we want the odd numbers, we can have an equals 2n minus 1. So if n equals 1, we have 2 times 1 minus 1 equals 1, and n equals 2, we get 4 minus 1 equals 3, etc. So this is the way sequences are usually denoted. And that's also uh, because we often have sequences with an infinite number of terms. And then it would be impossible, of course, to write down all terms. So let's look at some examples. For example, this one, a n equals n divided by n plus 1 and starting at 0 until infinity, well, the first element will be 1 over 1 plus 1 equals 1 half, the second element will be 2 over 2 plus 1 equals 2 over 3, etc., etc. Well, we do not need to start a sequence at n equals 1, we can start at any n we like. For example, the next sequence here, we start at n equals 3, for example, uh, and then we go on with n equals 4, n equals 5, etc. So for n equals 3, we get uh, square root of 3 minus 3 equals 0. And for n equals 4, we get minus 1 to the power 4 equals 1 times square root of 1 equals 1. And for n equals 5, we get a minus square root of 2, etc., etc. So that's how we can write down sequences. Well, this is one way. Another way, I might be much more familiar to you, is a recursive definition of the elements of a sequence. So how is that? Well, we specify for example, the first two elements of the sequence, a1 and a2, and then we say that the next element is the sum of the previous two elements. So an is the sum of an minus 1 plus an minus 2 for n bigger or equal than 3. So what do we get then? Well, we know our first two elements are 1 and 1, and the next element is the sum of those, 1 plus 1 equals 2, and then the next element is the sum of 1 plus 2 equals 3, and then we go on with 2 plus 3 equals 5, etc., etc. And you may know the sequence because it's a Fibonacci sequence. So that's another way to define a sequence. So what's the relation between sequences and functions? Well, actually, functions f of x contain much more information than sequences. For example, if you have the function f of x equals 1 over x, what's it here? We can evaluate this uh, function f on the integer values n, so we restrict the f to, on, uh, to only uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And so if you call that a n equals f, f n, then here we have the elements of our sequence. So actually a function, if you know how to handle functions, you can also know how to ha handle sequences because functions contain much more information than sequences. Sequences are just, you can view them just as, the, as a function, but then evaluate it only at the integer values.